you can buy a nice set of golf clubs. And then if you're willing to practice for thousands and thousands of hours, you have to get the grip just right. This thumb and finger make a V, point that toward the left shoulder, this thumb and finger toward the shoulder. Think fingers laced or not laced, either one will work. Knee slightly bent, shoulders curled, club face perpendicular to the ball. Bend the right elbow first, left elbow shortly thereafter, at about 15 degrees, left elbow bends, okay? If you are willing to practice for thousands of hours and really dedicate yourself, someday you will be able to knock a ball into a hole in the dirt. <laughs> and the angels rejoiced. <laughs> Heard a story about the preacher called his assistant and said, I need you to preach for me this morning. I'm, I'm not feeling very well. Preacher went golfing. You heard that story, brother? Yeah. <laughs> Devil's up there talking to the Lord. The devil said, hey, Lord, see your preacher out there? He's golfing on Sunday morning. The Lord said, yeah, I see it. The devil said, what are you going to do about it? He said, Lord said, I'll take care of it. The preacher tees off and a hole in one. Boom. The devil said, Lord, what are you doing? I thought you were going to fix it. The Lord said, I did. Who's he going to tell? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I think we ought to quit worrying about the things on this world, folks. They're all going to burn. It's all going to burn. If you're risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Set your affection on things above. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, it's of the world. The world passeth away. It's all going to be gone. It's all going to burn. Hey, do you know how much Howard Hughes left behind when he died? All of it. <laughs> Every penny. You're going to do the very same thing. Don't invest your life in things that are going to burn. Last thing we need to do, almost last thing, listen for the trumpet. 1 Thessalonians 4. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ rise first. Southern Baptists go first, but we're going next, okay? Uh, <laughs> then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. It's going to be great. Meet him in the clouds. Number 11, win souls. Find somebody you can win to Christ. Jesus was born, did his whole ministry under Roman control. Paul got taken to prison under Roman control. What did he do? Well, let's win the prisoner to the Lord. Win the jailer to the Lord. Just win souls. He that wins souls is wise. Most important thing I think a Christian can do is right there. Win souls. During the Civil War, a big old country boy signed up to go fight the Yanks. You know, they come down here invading our country. I'm going to go fight them Yanks. You know, he got his training, got his boot camp done, got his backpack and his rifle, and sent him off to battle. He showed up and said, reporting for duty, sir. Where's the Yanks? Sergeant said, son, the Yanks are right over there. They're dug in a trench, and we're dug in a trench here. Nobody's moving. We're waiting for orders. You, your job, son, is to march in the trench right here. He said, Sarge, I didn't come to march in no trench. I come to fight the Yanks, and they're right over there. Can I go fight them, please? He said, no, son, that's not the way it works. You march in the trench. When we get orders, then we attack. He's marching back and forth. He's getting madder by the minute. He said, man, I didn't come here to march in the mud. I come to fight the Yanks, and they're right over there. How come I can't go fight them, you know? Finally, he just, he just he couldn't take it anymore. Totally went berserk. Dropped everything, jumped up out of the trench, and ran <laughs> screaming and yelling across no man's land, straight for the Yankee trench, all by himself. A one-man rebel charge. The Yanks were stunned. Wow, who is this guy? Nobody thought to shoot. You know, he ran all the way across no man's land, jumped into the Yankee trench, picked up the first Yankee he saw, and boom, knocked him out. One punch. He's a country boy. He'd been toting, hey, man, he's hefty duty, you know. Picked up his prisoner and ran back for the rebel trench. Now nobody dared shoot, you know. He got back in the rebel trench. All the rebs gathered around and said, what is that? He said, that's a Yankee. He said, well, where'd you get him? He said, I got him over yonder. He said, there's a whole bunch more over there. He said, y'all could have had one if you'd have wanted one. Y'all could have had one if and you'd have wanted one. You know? So I think we're going to get to heaven, and some people are going to have a 
a whole crowd around them of people that they influenced for the Lord, you know? They brought them to Christ, they trained them, they got them going. And some of you, you're going to be there, you're going to heaven, but you're not going to have a, nobody with you, none, zero. You're going to walk up to somebody with a big crowd and say, where'd you get all these? Oh, I got them down yonder on the earth. Y'all could have had one if and you'd have wanted one. You just don't want one bad enough, do you? You're really more interested in the weather channel than uh, the neighbor going to heaven. Well, I've got to see if it's going to rain. And what are you going to do about it if it is? Huh? <laughs> okay. You're not going to affect it any. What on earth are you doing for heaven's sake? Last thing I recommend you do, read the last chapter, folks. Keep in mind, we win. It's going to get real bad. People say, Brother Hovind, you think the Lord's coming before the great tribulation? I hope so. I don't know. I couldn't prove it from Scripture. There are at least five theories of what happens in the end times, you know, post-trib, mid-trib, pre-trib, millennial, all that stuff. I've studied them carefully as I know how, and I can't figure it out. I'm sure hoping for pre-trib rapture. <laughs> so were the Chinese Christians for the last, you know, 60 years. So were the Russian Christians. So were the Ethiopian Christians and the African Christians over the last 15 years that have been killed by the tens of thousands. I don't know. I hope we get out of here first, but uh, I wouldn't, don't think I can prove that from Scripture. Either way, do what God told us to do. Win souls. When I was 16 years old, I'd been raised in the Lutheran Church, the Methodist Church, the Mennonite Church. I visited about every other kind there was, but I got saved. And I started going to a little independent, temperamental, fundamental, right-wing, radical, chicken-eating Baptist church. <laughs> And I was reading my Bible and growing in the Lord. It was great. I was having a, having a blast. My parents got concerned that I was going a little overboard, you know, so they sent me to the Methodist church camp to calm me down. And quite a few things happened the first few months to try to trip me up in my Christian growth. But after about three or four months of being saved, my buddy Tim said, Hey, Kent, do you want to go to the Heart of Illinois Fair? And we can go soul winning. I said, What's that? He said, We show other people how to go to heaven. I said, I've never done that. He said, Well, come on. I'll show you what to do. We got to the fair. They had two Volkswagen seats with uh, screens on them, and the kids would sit there and, you know, try to hit the buttons and shock the other person, a little electric seat kind of thing, to draw a crowd in. He said, all you got to do is go out in the crowd and get them to fill out this questionnaire, you know, ten questions. The last question said, would you like to get to know God better? So I was out there giving, and if, if they said yes, my job was to bring them to the back of the tent and say, hey, George, this is Herman. He wants to know God better. Oh, good, Herman, come on in. And they would lead him to Christ, and I'd go get another one. I was having a blast bringing people to the soul winner. Third night, I'm out there, Heart of Illinois Fair, Peoria, Illinois. This big old football player, I said, hey, you want to fill out the questionnaire? He said, sure. Last question, do you want to get to know God better? He said, yeah. I said, come with me. We went back to the back of the tent, opened up the tent flap. There was nobody there. They were all gone. He looked at me and said, what do we do now? He said, well, uh, I guess I'll show you. I'd never showed anybody how to be saved, okay? I, I had never done it. We sat down in the metal chairs in the dirt floor in the heart of Illinois Fair. I didn't know what to do, so I got out a track, God's Four Spiritual Laws, a little comic book, you know. I read the entire thing to him. You are a sinner. You're a sinner. <laughs> you deserve to go to hell. Jesus died for you. His blood can pay for your sins. I read through the whole thing. I didn't, I didn't know what else to do. I read the